If you want to get bigger, you've got to get stronger, period. It's no secret that progressive overload is the most critical factor in any training program when the goal is muscle size. However, the problem becomes when the coaches say, you've got to get stronger, most people assume that it means to lift heavier. It doesn't. Progression is not about adding five pounds to the bar. It's about getting better. As long as you're getting better, chances are you're getting bigger. Although the main goal is to add more weight to the bar, there will come a time in your training when you'll feel as if you've been stuck using the same weight for the last 12 months. When that happens and you feel as if you're not progressing enough to grow, start focusing a bit more on the following progression techniques mentioned in this video. Not only will this ensure that you're getting better, but all of these strategies will help when it comes down to adding weight to the bar later. Number one, more reps. Other than slapping another five pound plate onto the bar, increasing the number of reps you perform is the simplest and most effective method of progression. If you pushed 225 pounds for 10 reps during your last bench press session, and this week you managed to push for 12, congrats, you've gotten stronger. Adding reps, however, has its limitations. This is due to intensity or the physical power that the body uses when performing an activity. What this means is simple. Despite an increase in total volume, if the weight is not challenging enough, there will be a point of diminishing returns. According to a study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, you'd have to perform three times the total volume using a lighter weight to get the same results you would get from a moderate load. With that in mind, progression through increasing reps is best up until you're able to move a weight for 15 repetitions. Increasing reps any further than that and intensity are too low to maximize growth. Number two, more sets. If the goal is to increase total volume, the number of sets we perform is essential. We have evidence showing that multiple sets are associated with 40% greater hypertrophy than one set. That said, if you're someone who's currently training for one to two sets per exercise, then increasing the number of sets you perform will result in more muscle growth. The increase in muscle mass is simple. Total volume is increased when we add sets without sacrificing load used or reps performed. Similar to increasing repetitions, however, adding sets also has its limitations. A more recent study measured the dose response between three training groups, one set, three sets, and five sets. They concluded that three and five sets produced significantly greater gains than one set, and that five sets produced only slightly greater gains than three sets. So although increasing the number of sets is a viable option, the more sets we add, the less effective it becomes. This is why most programs cap their sets at about five per exercise. Anything over that is unnecessary. At this point, you're probably wondering, if we're increasing just the sets, not the reps or the weight, how is this making me stronger? The answer is very straightforward. If you can bench 225 pounds for six reps for one set, but not two, and you work your way up to being able to perform the same six reps on your second set, voila, you've gotten stronger. Number three, higher frequency. Another simple but effective method for adding volume without adding more weight is increased frequency. Training three days per week produces greater muscle growth than training once per week when volume is equal. This is, in my opinion, due to the repeated bout effect of training-induced protein synthesis. However, since we're discussing progression, the reasoning for including frequency is twofold. First, splitting your volume up into two to three separate training days will decrease the amount of time you spend training in a fatigued state. Secondly, the neuromuscular adaptations from performing specific movements more frequently will allow you to get better at the lifts faster. The more regularly we perform a lift, the more efficient we become at it, the more efficient we become, the more we can lift, and so on. Before you decide to start bench pressing five times per week, consider this. A recent meta-analysis concluded that training a muscle group twice per week is superior to training it once per week. Training a muscle group three times per week is superior to training it once per week, but its benefits over twice per week remain to be determined. What I recommend is simple. If you're hitting a muscle group once per week, start training it twice. If you're training it twice, bump it up to three times. Anything higher than that is probably not gonna give any added benefit. Number four, training density. Training density refers to the total volume completed within a certain time frame. For example, if you perform five sets of 10 reps in 30 minutes, your training density for that particular workout would be 50 repetitions. Say you walk into the gym and perform a total of five sets on the bench press for 10 reps each using 225 pounds and it takes you 30 minutes to complete. If you can manage to perform the same amount of volume, sets times reps times weight, in less time, you've progressed. Increasing training density can be done by simply decreasing your rest periods a little more after each session. For example, if you're resting 120 seconds between sets of squats, perhaps knock that down to 110 or 115 seconds next time you're squatting. 
Number five, increase force. Force equals mass times acceleration. Mass being the amount of weight used and acceleration referring to the concentric portion of the lift. It's no secret that it takes much more force to push 225 pounds off your chest in one second than it does to grind it up for two to three seconds. Thus, if last week you cranked out 10 reps of 315 on the squat, but the last rep was a grinder, and this week you moved the same 315 for 10, but the last rep went up with ease, you've gotten stronger. Once you reach a point in your training where you're no longer able to add weight to the bar weekly, focusing on increasing force would be a viable option. Say, for example, you managed to hit your prescribed numbers on the bench press, but the last two repetitions felt extremely difficult. Next week, instead of increasing the weight, keep it the same until you're able to hit the prescribed numbers with more ease. Number six, lifting lighter weight. If the goal is to increase total volume, but adding another five to 10 pounds to the bar isn't feasible, then go lighter. Not only will you acquire the adaptations associated with the lighter load, i.e. hypertrophy, increased lactate threshold, etc., but those same adaptations will play a positive role in your heavier load training. I would also add that in most cases, increasing reps will make for an increase in volume, even if the intensity and or the number of sets has been decreased. For example, 225 by five by five equals to 5,625 pounds of volume. 185 by eight by four is equal to 5,920 pounds of volume. 135 by 15 by three is equal to 6,075 pounds of volume. Number seven, beyond failure. When's the last time you saw someone performing single arm curls with a 75 pound dumbbell and using good form? I can answer that, never. Believing that you're not progressing with your smaller lifts because your bench has gone up 10 pounds in the last week and you've been stuck curling the same 30 pound dumbbells for the last month is silly. Think about a bench press. You're not only using one of the largest muscle groups in the body, the chest, You've got assistance from the triceps, the shoulders, and if your form is dialed in, the core and some leg drive. Do you think it's fair to compare that with a single joint exercise that targets one of the smallest muscle groups we train directly? This is why when it comes to small isolation lifts, since we're limited in the amount of weight we can increase, adding reps would be our best bet. But if you've been training for long enough, you know that it's easier said than done, especially since there is a cap on how many repetitions we should work up to. This is where I recommend beyond failure training. Failure, or the point where you cannot complete another repetition with strict form. The beyond failure techniques I am going to share will allow you to add total volume without increasing weight by pushing beyond the normal limits of muscular failure through extending work sets. Beyond failure training includes cheat reps, partials, drop sets, rest pause, negatives, forced reps. Please note that these techniques should be used on the last set of your last exercise or on small isolation lifts. These were the seven ways to get stronger without using weight. If you implement everything in this video, you can undoubtedly get bigger and stronger. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll genuinely help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order, plus free shipping by using the coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.